How many can feel love here today? Feel the love of God. Feel the love of God. I want to deal with and want everyone, if you're working in the dining room, stay as long as you can and hear this lesson so there'll be little interruption in the next few minutes while we're into this lesson. And um, I, I want to deal with Psalms 42. If you have your Bibles, um, go with me there. I want to use the word disquieted and disquiet. You can put it on the screen, spell it for the saints to see. It's in the scriptures. It, uh, it means something very much. And uh, we'll start with verse 1. We'll go down toward the verse, perhaps the whole psalm. It'd be good to read just to get it in your mind. And I'll show you why I'm using this today. That I may impart something to you, the church, that will strengthen you in the time in which you live. May God let you feed from the Word. And may the word strengthen your heart here in this place today. The scripture said, as the heart that is a deer, the heart, the deer, panic long enough after the water brooks, so panic for my soul after thee, O God. My soul thirsteth for God. For the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? My tears have been my meat, my nourishment, day and night. While they continually say unto me, Where is thy God? Tears. Tears. Suffering. My tears have been my meat, day and night. While they continually say unto me, Where is thy God? When I remember these things, I pour out my soul in me, for I had gone with a multitude. I went with them to the house of God, with a voice of joy and praise, with a multitude, multitude that kept holy day. Sounds like he went to church, doesn't it? Yeah. Sounds like he assembled with the rest of God's people. Verse 5, why art thou? Now, David brings in a question. <clears throat> and for say, we went with the multitude to the house of God, and stating that his soul longed after God as a deer longing for water to drink. And David said, why art thou cast down? O oh, my soul, it puzzled David and he could not be a happy man in assembling with God's people. But David brought up a very paramount issue that is paramount in our church, in our church age, in the society in which we live. The people that should be the example to the world of cheerfulness, happiness, joy, peace, Long suffering, gentleness, goodness, mercy, meekness, faith, all the attributes that goes with living a saved life, with living a life of redemption, a life that has been changed by Christ in you, the hope of glory. There was a problem. It's like David is almost leaping over here into a thousand churches, even into our church. Why art thou disquieted? My soul longed after you. I desire you, I panic for you as a deer. Uh, I went with a multitude to the house of God. I assembled with them on the holy day. But why art thou disquieted? 
And the word disquieted means troubled, doesn't it? Perplexed, frustrated, yes. confused. All the thing, things that you and I are familiar with in what we call the valley, the emotional experience of sadness, heartbreak, heartache, uh, confusion, fear, disquieted. When you're disquieted, you're not at rest, are you? When you're disquieted, you're not at peace. Something is not harmonious in you. Something is not working as it should in your spirit, in your soul, in your inner self. And David said, why art thou cast down, depressed? Depression should never be in a Christian's life. But it is because we are fighting, and we emphasize this a great deal among us. I listen to language. I listen to my own language. And sometimes I am my greatest critic when I go home from the service and I go back over the message I preached and what I said. I'm my greatest critic because the church spends a lot of time in expression, discussion, personally, privately, uh, vocally in the church on how discouraged we've been or how discouraged we are or what a bad week we've had how the old man has really given us trouble. Well, so listen to your language. Talking to your wife, to your husband. Talking to one another. And expressions in the church, preaching, teaching, testimonies. That isn't harmonious with the scripture. The scripture teaches me that I am to be changed by the power and life and the Holy Spirit in me. You say, but Brother Marlowe, I'm also wrestling. But if you're spending more time talking about the wrestling, yes, sir. then you are the victory. Yes, sir. Something's out of balance. Yes, sir. It even affects the unbeliever. Because they come into the church and they expect to see happy faces. Yes. After all, we told them we were saved. Amen. If you're saved, you should be happy about it. Yes. We told them that we've been redeemed, yes. that we've been changed, yes. that we've found a new life, yes. that Christ has helped us, that we're a new creation. Yes. <laughs> see, I'm making a point here because we're going to change from the era that we're in, whether we want to or not. The church is not going to stay where it is. Because progressively, the scriptures must be fulfilled. The scriptures must be fulfilled. And one of the, one of the things that must be fulfilled is the coming again of Jesus. And Jesus is not coming back for a disquieted church. He's not coming back for a resting church. He's not coming back for a church that is groaning over their failure to have the Amen. peace. All the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, mercy, meekness, Temperance against such, there is no law. Yes. So now we, we, we need to emphasize some things right now among us so that collectively the world can start seeing. And when the world starts seeing a light on the hill, a city set on a hill, the church, salt, the church, light, the church, yes. Happiness, the church. Peace of mind, the church. Harmonious with one another, the church. Quarreling and bickering out of that door, not in here. 
anger and hostility out that door, not in here. Racial prejudice out that door, not in here. Bigotry out that door, not in here. Because this is the church. This happens to be a special treasure. We happen to be a chosen vessel. We are the redeemed. I've said that. Have you said that? Amen. Have you stated that? Yes. All right, then. The walking must do the walk walking and let the talking not be the talking. Because the scripture said, David said, Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted in me? Then the Spirit of God in David came back. This is the Spirit of God in David. He said, Hope thou in God. See, that was the Spirit of God in David. She was writing. Yes. He was trying to figure out why am I disquieted? Yes. Why, why am I upset? Uh, why am I troubled? Suddenly the Spirit of God in David came back and said, Hope thou in God. For I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. Did you know you cannot get help from a countenance? That's the facial appearance, unless you look at the face. Amen. That's where your hope comes from. Yeah. When I look at you and you're smiling at me, it brings hope. When I look at you and you're <coughs> loving me, it brings hope. Yes. When I look at you and you're not angry with me, it brings hope. When I look at you and you're cheerful, it brings hope. When I look at you and your hands are like this, it brings hope. But if I look at you and your hands are like this, no hope. But David said, I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. You cannot look in the face of Jesus without having a praise in your spirit. Amen. Because he is your redeemer. Yes, he is. He is your savior. Yes, he is. He is your Lord. Yes, he is. Praise the name of the Lord. If you want to get over depression in a moment, Come on, brother, brother. look into the face of Jesus. Yes. If you want to get over despair in a moment, look over into the face of Jesus. The greatest pain in your life will go away. When death stared me in the face a few years ago on Highway 51 out of uh, Memphis, Tennessee, and I was hurtling toward a field, a telephone pole, and lights in my face, and the impact of another car 65 miles an hour, and I was hurtling out into eternity. I cried, oh, help me, Jesus, in one moment, however he has save me, Amen. redeem me. Amen. That's how great he is. Amen. I said that's how great he is. Yes. That's how great he is. Yes. We don't praise him enough. Yes. We should praise him more. Amen. We should give him more glory. Amen. We should give him more honor. Because he can change any condition yes. and any perplexity yes. and any futility of your life. David knew this. Yes, he did, brother. He said, Why art thou cast down on my soul? Why art thou disquieted in me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. Verse 6, Oh my God. And David goes back down into the yes. flesh. David goes back down into the flesh now. He's having an emotional reaction. He's having a journey in his flesh. And David is clouding the book of Psalms with his defeat rather than his victory. And we can cloud the church with our continual feeling, I'm defeated, I'm going to be defeated. Or folks, I've been having a terrible time. Folks, I tell you, I'm not sure I'm going to make it. Pray for me, but I will. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if I'm even going to uh, get through this week. See, that, 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 that's a spiritual depression. Come on. 
and the church ought to be lifted from it. But I'm a human being, Brother Marla, that's right. But you're also God's child, aren't you? You've also been redeemed, haven't you? You also have a past that's past. You've got a present that's present. Amen. And your past was yesterday, but your present is right now. You're not in sin, you're in Jesus Christ. You're not in the world, you're in the church. You're not out there in the darkness, you're in the light. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm saying these things to prepare us for the great harvest that must be because it stirred me so much when I was in Atlanta Friday to hear and to see nations, Uganda, Kenya, Zambia, and they come to this country because the Spirit of God said to them, go to America and try to save America. Because it only was yesterday that America was sending missionaries all over the world yes. to save the world. Yeah, right. It disturbed me then. <clears throat> I've got to say something to the church. I'm responsible. I have to awaken some people around me. I have to stir some hearts. What do we appear like we're doing? How do we look? In this great nation, this world God's given us, this wonderful country, this great nation, do we appear right now as the hopeless and the helpless? Do we appear as people that have lost their way? Do we have appear? Do we appear that our soul is so disquieted in us that the world we know is disquieted, but the church shouldn't be disquieted? That's it. Hmm. Disquieted means trouble. You say, but I'm a human being, brother Marlon, I need to pay a bill. I'm in trouble. I've got a mind, I think. Yes, but you also have Jesus. Hallelujah. I said you have Jesus. Yes. And is this a truth or a lie? Greater is he that is in you. Is that the truth? Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world? Yes. All right, then I've got the difference. Because my soul will be disquieted for a moment, and I will be troubled for a moment, or perhaps seconds, or perhaps an hour or so. But hope thou in God. Amen. Yes. Spirit of God touches you. Where do you get it from? Somebody said, call him up, call him up. Friend, that is the most false song ever written. Call him up. You don't have to call him up. If he lives in your house, he's right there. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. I'm not going to water that down. I said, if you, this idea, call him up, call him up. He may come, he may not. He'll, he'll, he'll get there, but not always on time. He'll get there, but not always. No, that isn't right. Biblically, that's not right. The church has Christ abiding in us. He is in my house when I'm sleeping at 2 o'clock in the morning and don't even know my senses. He is in my being. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. When I'm in my fever, he is there. Has been, I'm feeling well this weekend, and, and she, she was an example of faith. Uh, I said, you want to be home? I know I know there's a day for you, but uh, you're not peeing up the farm? Uh, she said, no, I'm going to church. I'm going to fill my place. I'm going to sing songs. I'm going to worship the Lord. And thank God she stepped out here today in the spirit of the Lord. Amen. Be That's it. Right. And if it is, let it be for a minute. Yeah. Yeah. Let it be for a second. Yeah. Let it be for an hour, but get rid of that. Come on. And say, hope thou in God. Oh, God. Yes. That's your hope. Be his name. No matter what you're doing, no matter what it's physical, mental, emotional, That's right? it. 
Your hope is in God. Yes. It isn't in a local loan agency. It's not down here in, in a department store. Come on. I think I'll go shopping and feel better. No, you shop praises to God and feel better. People in the world go shopping and feel better. But I praise God and feel better. Praise the name of the Lord. I think I'll go do something just to get rid of this boredom. No, praise God to get rid of the boredom. Because we're complete in Him. The Bible said you are complete in Him. And Jesus is getting a church ready right now that will be complete in Him. Yes, sir. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Complete in Christ. And David said, Oh my God, my soul is cast down within me. Therefore will I remember thee from the land of Jordan and from the Hermonites and from the hill of Mazar. Deep calleth unto deep with the noise of thy water spouts. All thy waves and thy pillars are gone over me. Yet the Lord, yet the Lord yes. will command his loving kindness in the daytime. I won't, get, well, I won't read that by myself. I want the church to read that. Praise God. Oh, I feel victory here this afternoon. Amen. What I'm saying here. Because God is going to help some of you. Because you need to stop disquieting one another. And you need to stop disquieting yourself. And start getting a hold of the, com the, the complete confidence that no matter what you are encountering now, the church is in transition yes, to where we will not be wrestling, That's it. wrestling, wrestling. But we will come to Romans 8. There is therefore now yes. no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. I didn't say in days to come. I didn't say tomorrow. I said now. There's a now church coming. There's a, there's a now experience coming. There's a now presence of God coming. Praise the Lord. I believe today, right here on 7th Avenue, yes. there is a tremendous cloud yes. overshadowing this tabernacle. Yes. Praise our God. And tonight the pillar of fire will be here. And the glory of God yes. is over this place. And yes. this land is blessed of God. And this house is blessed of God. Yes. And I am blessed of God. And you are blessed of God. And your family is blessed of God. We don't start believing that. We don't start marching in here like soldiers, assuming our place, being happy, being cheerful. We'll never be the light in the city. We'll never be a city set on a hill that can't be hit. It's quiet. It's not just quiet. If you're a troublemaker in this church, stop it. Stop it. Amen. If you're a sour push in this church, stop it. Get a cheerful face. Amen. You're somebody that drags around, filling your place, dragging, never being enthused about it, never being happy about it. Oh, well, i got to do it again. I hate to get up there, but I will. I'm going to be a sacrifice. You're not a sacrifice. You're a burnt offering. Amen. Amen. You're not a sacrifice. I, 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 I got to do it again. I know somebody has to do it. Somebody has to. No, you don't have to. You get to. That's right. I don't have to be here today. I got to be here. I'm glad to be here because God blessed me. Praise the name of the Lord. He didn't bless thousands of others, millions of others, but he blessed me. I heard the truth. I got a revelation. I got a revealing. I know what the truth is. worries me getting on you, friend. There's a bigger guy than I am that'll take care of you. Amen. Oh, he'll be he'll be upset. No, no, I'm not going to be upset because I'm going to let that stuff stop disquieting me. The church needs to stop disquieting one another. Being upset with one another. Bothered with each other. How can you serve God when you're bothered 
with her or him you can't. or them. You can't. How can you serve God when you're upset two-thirds of the time? Doesn't the Bible say be at peace? Yes. Be at peace. Yes. Blessed are the peacemakers. Yes. For they shall be called the children of God. Yes. How many is getting what Brother Marlowe saying right now? See, I believe the church is a refuge. I believe the church is a strong tower. I'm here today because I needed to come here. I needed to get help. I needed to get healing. I needed to get peace. Praise the name of the Lord. You are the people I want to be with all afternoon into the night. I want to be with you. Praise our God. Not a forced march. Not a forced march. Oh, well, you're going to be upset with me. Quit worrying about them being upset. Because your soul is just quiet. Something's bothering you. You're perplexed. You're frustrated. So get rid of that. Because you've got a job to do. Yes. This, this church is going into transition. It's in transition. Yes, it's going. This church has been in transition for about the last two years. It's been changing. God's going to make better changes. He's going to make better moves. Because the time has come for the church to get ready for the coming of the Lord. Amen. And we're not always be here just us on Seventh Avenue. There are multitudes coming. Fifty-five years ago, I saw a Sunday afternoon service here where the ambulances were backed up on the front of this church. Amen. And the lame were getting out. I'm seeing a little bit of it in these wonderful saints here that are daring and brave enough to ride this street and Get down here and come in these chairs. Yes. I'm seeing a little part of that. But that's only a drop in the bucket. Because yes. the time is coming when God is going to empty some of these nursing homes and these ACLF homes around here. Amen. And they're going to be here on a Sunday afternoon. But when they get here, they'll come in these chairs. But they'll leave here walking and leaping and praising God. You believe that? You believe that kind of gospel? Yes. Amen. If I believe that, then let's get ready. Let my Despite it. Come in despite it. Leave despite it. Be upset. Take it out on the husband. Take it out on the wife. Take it out on each other. Take it out on the children. Come on. Stop it. Because the church is to be a haven of rest. Yes. In the name of the Lord. To be a strong town. And David had this problem. David had this problem. And God was dealing with him. And he said, uh, yet the Lord, all right, read this verse, eighth verse. This verse is powerful. It's so powerful it may rock you in your chair while you're reading it. Read it with me right now, all right? Verse 8, yet the Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime and in the night. His soul shall be with me and my prayer unto the God. Yes, it is. Yes. But there must be a place 
when we go in and no more out. And, no more out. Come on, brother. and we talk about it, but when's that going to happen? Yes. Yeah. How, many, how many believe that you've got to stop somewhere going in and out, Amen. in and out? Amen. I'm happy today. I'm sour tomorrow. I'm unhappy today. I'm happy tomorrow. I'm, I'm, I'm upset with the church today. I'm happy with the church uh, uh, tomorrow. Uh, everything's good today. Everything's bad tomorrow. Uh, they upset me. They bothered me. They frustrated me. Uh, she got on my nerves. She got on my nerves. You, you're going in and out. That's like backing a car in and out of the garage. You go back it out, back it in. You'd get dizzy after a while with that. I don't think there's a lot of dizzy people right now. They, they, they get back in and back out so much. They're happy, they're sad, they're upset, they're glad. They're for the church, bless God. Ten angels uh, will come and try to move me. They can't. Ten devils, I'll shake them off. And then tomorrow, come on, devils, you got me down. Somebody had to No, no, somewhere that's got to stop. You say it can't stop, I'm a human being. Yes, it can, because greater is he that's in you. I said greater is he that's in you. There is a power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. You shall receive power. I don't think we can always teach in the church that we're going to wrestle with the flesh. We're going to somewhere get to the place where we quit wrestling and we have victory and we say we're dead in Christ. You that are risen in Christ, seek those things that are above where Christ sitteth at the right hand of God. Praise the name of the Lord. Oh, Brother Marlowe, oh, Brother Marlowe, don't you know? Don't you know, Brother Marlowe, you're not being realistic. We live in a world where I have to get upset. If I don't get upset, I won't be right. I've got to get angry twice a day. It's like eating. i got to eat twice a day. i got to be angry twice a day. No, you don't. No, you don't. No. You can go all day long without getting angry. Right. Praise the name of the Lord. Come on. That's like habits you think you've got to do. I've got to go do it. No, you don't have to do it. You can come to the place where you will put it down, walk away from it, lay it aside, have victory over it. Be dead in Christ with your life hid with Christ in God. Overcome. Do we still believe in overcoming in the church? Do we still believe in overcoming? Do you believe in overcoming the flesh? And if you overcome it, if I walk over and I just say you aggravated me enough, bam! You won't do it after that. If you do and you let me up, you won't do it after that. Somewhere the old man has to die, and Christ has to live. And I'm not here to exalt the flesh. I'm not here to exalt the old man. I found the victory. Amen. The victory is in Christ. Hit the old man. The nature. Don't, don't stand there and fight him all day and battle him all day. Don't spend two hours in a service saying, well, I wouldn't get in this meeting. I would, I'd get behind uh, this. I'd praise the Lord. I, but, uh, you know, I'm just quiet. I'm upset. Uh, I, I, I just can't do it. It's just it's too great. No, you can do it. Because there's enough of the presence of God uh, here to do it with. Praise the name of the Lord. There's, there's enough of the presence of God. Right now, did you know there is a God in our midst? that can absolutely dissolve a cancer Amen. if it's in your body right now. Amen. Oh, yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I don't care what you have wrong with you physically, mentally, and emotionally, there is a presence Amen. of the Amen. Most High God Amen. in the church this afternoon. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Because he's coming back again. And he's getting us ready. And we're washing of the water in the word. And he's cleaning us, cleansing us. And David said, I will say unto God, my rock, why hast thou forgotten me? God had not forgotten David. Why do I mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? He didn't have to. As with a sword in my bones, my enemies reproach me. While they say daily unto me, where is thy God? All right, what do you do with an enemy that's working on you? Saying, where is your God? What did Job do with Satan? 
When Satan said to God, if you take the head down from him and let me at him, he'll curse you. Job didn't curse him, did he? Was Satan defeated? He was defeated. Praise the name of the Lord. He didn't, he said, naked I came into this. His wife said, Job, you've got boils all over your body. You're scraping yourself with a pot shirt. You, you can't sit down, Job. You've got boils all over. You can't lie down. Job, Job, you're in miserable shape. You've lost your children. You've lost your houses. You've lost your camel trains. Your sheep are all gone. Your horses are all gone. Everything you have, Job, is gone. So why don't you just curse God and die? Thank God for the victory. The victory. I said, thank God for the victory. Well, that was back there with a man named Job. I never met him. I don't know. I don't know about Job. I don't know about me. I don't know if I could do that or not. Yes, you can do that because greater is He. Job didn't have Him in Him. He had Him with Him. But I'm better than Job. I've got Him in me. Praise the name of the Lord. I said He's in me. we're done for it. Without revival, there is no survival. Coin that phrase with me. Without revival, there is no survival. We must have revival from God in the church right now. It must come in our worship. It must come in our music. It must come in our praise. It must come in our hands. We've got to unfold our hands. We've got to lift our hands. We've got to lift our voice. We have to praise Him. We've got to give Him glory. Praise the name of the Lord. Because in praises, the walls fall down. In praises, the enemy flee. In praises, the enemy go. You'll wrestle with your spirit. You'll wrestle with your words. You'll wrestle with your feelings. Because some of us don't have very much money in the bank. I don't. Some of you may have, I, I don't know a lot. Some of us have issues. I have issues inside of me. If I let them, if I dwell on them, I think about them. I have a storm that can erupt in my soul. If I let it, a greater. Why should my soul be as quiet? I found him. I saw him walking on the water. I met the wave master. I met the master of the wind. Praise the name of the Lord. I called him up out of the bottom of the ship. He stood on the deck, my soul, and said, Peace be still. Praise our God. The enemy may come at me a moment. He may come at me a second. He might be there for an hour to wrestle with, but he will not be there from sun set to sunrise. No. Because I'm an overcomer, and I'm getting closer all the time. And there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. I'm moving from Romans 7 to Romans 8 right now. Romans 7 said, Oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? For 69 years, I've been going through that phrase. But recently, I crossed over the Rubicon. I passed over a hill. I got through a tunnel. And right now, there is victory in my soul and in my spirit. Because I am determined that nothing called flesh will keep my eyes off the glory of the Lord and his coming again.
the sword in my bones. Mine enemies reproach me. While they say daily unto me, where is thy God? Amen. Why art thou cast down on my soul? And why art thou disquieted within me? Hope thou, again, the Spirit of God comes back in David. Hope thou in God. For I shall yet praise him who is the help. Who is the help? Who is the help? Praise God. Who is the help? I'm not going to leave that for a minute. I want you to get this. For Brother Marlow, they're sick. Can't you see they're sick? Yes, I see people are sick. I see people are ill. I know when I'm ill. I know when I'm sick. But that doesn't matter. He is my help. No matter what condition I'm in, it's not the condition I'm going to stay in. I'm not going to stay in that condition. I'm passing to the valley of Baca. Praise the name of the Lord. But he'll, he'll let me get through that valley. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He restored my soul. Hallelujah. He leads me beside the still waters. Praise our God. Praise our God. The Lord is my shepherd. The church must become salt again. It must become light again. It must become the candle in the night for a lost and dying world. I want to say a word to Africa. I want to say a word to the people. I appreciate them and their zeal. And they'll be with us in February. And I want them to come here and preach and bless us. Let me say it back to Africa. This will go out to Africa. I want to say to Africa and the whole world, the United States does have a remnant church in it. Praise the name of the Lord. Did you hear what I said, church? I say to the whole world right now, there is God's people yet in America. There is a remnant, my God, I feel this time. There is a remnant in America that's going to lift their voices and the Holy Ghost is going to help them. Right. We will not be put down. Right. We are the remnant church. We are saved. The same blood that saved them in Africa saved me in America. The same name, the name of Jesus, saved them in Africa. in America before they got it in Africa. Yes, sir. Right. I heard a man named William Sather yes. in my lifetime teach the pathway of charity. Yes. Straighten me out on the devil. Yes. Tell me about the seal. Yes. Open the seal to me. Yes. Praise the name of the Lord. Yes. I found out what the flesh was and what the spirit is. I learned to worship God in spirit and in truth. I met prophets here. Prophets opened my eyes. Prophets let me see the word of God. I know the pathway of charity. I know how to be baptized in water properly. None other name than the name of Jesus. I know the family name. It's not the church of this or the church of that or the church of that. It is the name of Jesus. There's one name. I bow my knee. I got the revelation, Paul. I got it, Paul. You taught it 2,000 years ago. I got it. I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. I know what perfection is. I know what overcoming is. I don't believe you have to sin every day. I don't believe you have to leave this world sinning. I believe you can reach a place where sin does not reign in your body, that you are dead with your life, hid with Christ in God. Come on, I got a revelation on the world. I know what the world is. I know how not to dress like the world, and I know how not to act like the world, and I know how not to speak like the world. I don't know how.